You are listening to Woodland Walks, a podcast for the Woodland Trust, presented by Adam Shaw. We protect and plant trees for people, for wildlife. Well, today I've come to the Smithles Estate. Now, this is a very exciting area of land. It's it's huge to begin with, and it's got all sorts of things. It's got grassland, farmland, moorland. It's got wooded ravines. It's got bogs. Uh, there's a whole bunch of dry stone walls, I'm told. And even more impressive, perhaps, than all of that is that uh, it's got panoramic views over a very wide area. You can see from Bolton to Manchester and beyond. And what I'm hoping to see is a whole bunch of wildlife and trees and plants. So there's oak here, there's holly, there's wild garlic, I'm told, ash, even something called chicken of the woods. More of that a bit later on. So a huge area to get through. Let's get on with it. I've come to the top of some heathland here, which is... This is a big landscape. This is a really big landscape, a huge sort of moorlands. Not many trees at the moment, actually, but this is the largest site that the Woodland Trust have in England. And I've come right to the top of a hill uh, where there's an enormous TV antenna. You don't often see landscapes like this, I think, in England, something this sort of scale. And I've come to meet Tracy Garrett and Vicky Entwistle from the Woodland Trust who are key people in in this Smithles estate and they're going to show me around and introduce me to some of the locals. So what is it that the trust is doing here, Tracy, that is so different? So the, the thing for the trust here is the right tree, right place. So it'll be using trees in upland fringes rather than planting the entire estate in trees. We've actually got a huge section of moorland which will be restored to peat bog. So it's quite a mixed and varied um, landscape. So it sounds to me quite significant actually that you're called the Woodland Trust but it's not all about trees and woods then. That, that's a big statement to make, isn't it? It is. And I think that's the thing about right tree, right place, that we need to, as a trust, look at conservation as a whole. We work with many, many different partners in lots of different ways, which means that we have to work in lots of different landscapes. Trees aren't the only solution to landscape problems. So, God, look at this. This is really rugged, isn't it? It is. Uh, do you come up here in the bad weather as well? What's it like? Is it, how challenging is well, it? Well, actually, we did come up here last week, uh, got out of the car, went to check a tree planting site, and within a minute we were hailstoned. We had to run back to the car, so it does happen a lot that the weather is very bad. Um, but it's fantastic up here because it's always wild, and that's one of its attractions. Can you just describe the sort of landscape we're, we're, we're walking across now? Well, if you're looking out where we are now, you can see... Um, part of the triple SI and the moorland that we've got here um, and you can see an area of tree planting a bit further down so you can see the stakes and the tubes of a new woodland that's going to grow. Um, you can also see a bit of the moor that still looks damaged from the fire a couple of years ago so it does look, it brings mixed emotions looking on it at the right. moment. Were you, th- now this was a, a huge fire wasn't it? It was which covered moorland for, well, for a very big distance. It did and a third of our estate was damaged by the fire. Right. W- when was this? It was in uh, July 2018. And were you here at the time? I was. I hadn't been working here very long. Right. So it was a bit of an introduction. What, what was it like? What were you doing on the night then? Um, well, when the fire started, um, the fire brigade came up to monitor. But as the week went on, all of us, all we did was incident control. So we were with the fire brigade and the ambulance service every day. We were out on fire watch. We were trying to warn the public to keep off the footpaths, closing different areas. We had to reposition all the diggers that were building the new car park to come up right. here and build fire breaks, requisition a helicopter, all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So basically nothing was normal. Right. Well, was it scary at the time? I've never been involved in an incident like that. Um, it was more upsetting, really, to see the damage that was happening. Um, it made me quite emotional. We came up to Burnt Edge, which is a little bit further down from where we are now, and we looked so across. It, was it called Burnt Edge because yeah. of the fire? No, it was no. already called that. <laughs> But we could see the smoke coming up and, you know, with all the events we've been having and all the community work we've been doing and just thinking how sad it was to see that huge area that people love yeah. being yeah. destroyed. And how much, I mean, is it already recovered or is it, do you think it's done some lasting damage? It will be decades before it gets back to how it was before. Wow, look at 
look at that. A little little mini waterfall almost. Yeah, that's coming off the Mass Road actually. Um, so that's the runoff from the hillside further up. And that's leading down to the Leaky Dams. It is called the Leaky Dam. It is called Leaky Dams, yeah. It does have some really fancy technical name as well, but for most of us, we just refer to it as the Leaky Dams. And is it Leaky Dams because it was badly built? I've, I've had builders like, <laughs> like that, or is it meant to be a Leaky Dam? It's meant to be a Leaky Dam. Basically, on this clough here, we have the Leaky Dams going across, and the intention is that it slows the flow of water down so that the river courses further down have time to recover and we don't get so many flooding incidents. This is actually... Actually, um, a test and a research project. Um, it's been in probably about six months and in the recent heavy rains it's proved to be really quite effective so over time we'll be able to build up a really good picture of whether this sort of dam is a really good solution for flooding. Right so it's it, it sort of it's building in the idea that it slowly releases water so that the environment has time to to sort of recompense. To it. That's absolutely right yeah that's exactly what it's doing. I just wonder, more than an intellectual engagement, emotionally, what speaks to you about this sort of world, this sort of environment? Why is it important to you? I think that spending time with nature brings you that connectedness again and it does wonders for your well-being. I think it's a bit of peace. I think a lot of the time if you're working in an office or if you're in a town centre, a lot of the time a built-up area, you're bombarded with information all the time. Our lives are busy. If you get up, up here and there's nobody walking around and it's really peaceful and you can hear this river behind us <laughs> how tranquil is that it gives you a space to collect your thoughts and just feel a bit more able to cope yeah. i feel i should just be silent and record that and play it so i go to sleep to that i mean people <laughs> people pay good money for that so hold on give, give me 10 seconds i was just going to listen to the to the little waterfall now one of the the most famous things about this area is something called the mass trespass vicky just it wasn't recent, it was what, 1800s? It was in 1896, so the anniversary of it is actually next year, 125th anniversary. Right. And why is it so important? What happened in this mass trespass? So it's difficult to imagine now, we stood up here and it's so quiet, but this area used to be a hive of activity. And slightly further down the estate, there would be the brick and tower works, coal mines, and at the bottom, the bleaching mills. So there would be noise and industry and pollution. And up here was somewhere that people would come on a Sunday to get away from that and to breathe some fresh air. So people really, really valued this environment. And at one point in 1896, the chap who owned this estate, it was called Colonel Ainsworth, decided to close it off, the path that people were using, so that he could do grouse shooting on that Sunday. But this was public land. They, they had a right to, of access or not? No, it was his land. Right. But he had been letting them access right. it. But the fact that people wanted to be here, it was so important to them that they decided to get together and numbers vary. I mean, I've seen notes saying like 20,000, 10,000, 1,000, but thousands of people gathered in Bolton and walked up here and trespassed. And it actually did lead to it being reopened again. Right. So it was a really brilliant people power thing for Bolton. Amazing. So you gave, so in the end, that, that Colonel painted as a bit of an evil character, in the end, he came good. Well, I don't know. <laughs> okay, don't know. You're, you're right. You're, big forehead brows there, big forehead brows. We're not sure about yeah. the colonel. We're not sure about the colonel. Sure about the colonel. <laughs> Poor chap, died a hundred years ago. No, he's, not, he's, got, he's got not, no one here to defend him. All right, anyway, brilliant. The mass trespass. Well, just a bit down the path, there's a sign which explains a little bit more about that. So let's just go have a read. The Bolton Chronicle, Bolton Chronicle said, amidst, amid the lusty shouting of the crowd, the gate was attacked by powerful hands. Short work was made of the barrier, and with a ring of triumph, the demonstrators rushed through onto the disputed territory. Plans were soon in place to repeat the procession, and a song was commissioned. So, you know, Do you know the song, Ricky? I don't know how it goes. No, I've you seen know. the poem. I thought it was a poem, actually. I didn't know there was a tune. Tracy, you don't, you're not keen on singing? I absolutely don't know the song. Okay, yes. She's, yes. We don't believe her, do we? Uh, let's, I think I'm going to get you guys to... Someone's going to sing that song by the end of the day. You mark my words. You mark my words. It could be me. It could be me. 
So we're just spotting in the distance there two of our volunteer wardens. We're really lucky here because we've got some really dedicated volunteers and the two wardens are absolutely part of a team that are really, really valued by us. And what are their names? That's Alex and Pete. Alex they, and Pete. Um, they do joke that they... Um, actually, I'm not so sure it's a joke, but <laughs> they do say that they're just loaning us the estate. Oh, right. So you think they're volunteers and they think they're lords of the manor? I think that's absolutely right, yeah. Oh, well, we've got to go meet them, haven't we? It's Pete and what? Pete and Alex. Pete and Alex, Pete and Alex, OK. Gentlemen, hi, I'm Adam. Hi, Adam, I'm Alex. Hi, Alex, you must be Pete. I'm Pete, yeah. Wonderful. So so what is it that you do here? Yeah, Bolton Council used to own the estate. Uh, we, we used to be re- volunteer rangers yeah. with them and they decided to get rid of us in right. 2008 and we was a bit in limbo then yeah. with nothing to do we just had to go for our walks then didn't we yeah, yeah, yeah. so you you guys know each other before you didn't meet oh, yeah, on here long, be- long before but then w- when we heard that the trust were interested in uh, buying the land we wrote to them and uh, suggested we would be perfect volunteers <laughs> right okay um, we were the people that they were looking for and couldn't manage with us. Right. And what, what was the reply to that? Well, um, initially, it was silence. I don't think they'd got to that stage yet. They hadn't even completed the purchase yet. Right. But um, eventually we got a reply and said, yeah, please come along for a right. chat. And then, uh, um, what we know, three, four years later, yeah. we're a part of the uh, yeah. establishment. And are you local boys? Do you, You've yeah. always known this, this landscape you yeah. have? Yeah. yeah. So did you used to come on here when you were a, when you were a kid? I did. I'm sure Pete did Absolutely. as well. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been uh, a kid and up ha- here as well. How important is this landscape t- to you? It's vitally important. It's important to the whole area. I mean, if we just, were just to take a walk up onto the Mass Road up there, you could see you can see you can see Manchester now from where we're stood, Media City, Bolton, of course, over to Oldham, Rochdale. That's that side. If you go over there, you can see the Irish Sea, Blackpool, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool Bay, down to the North Wales, up into the Black Coombe on the edge of the Lake District. Yeah, it's quite quite so, a vantage point. Um, and how often do you come up here? Um, we're here every Monday, every Thursday as well, but we get dragged in quite regular by the gaffers, by the bosses. Right. We get <laughs> We do get because you're the, you're the poster boys of yeah, the area, yeah, is of it? Of course we are. Of course we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah but not uh, sure what kind of a poster? Yeah. But all good. It's all good. It's all, it's all, it's all good. Um, okay, so that's that's fantastic. Now, it, it, it's quite an area. For not only I mean, is it quite majestic? But there's quite a history to it as, as well, isn't there? there? There was this mass trespass, which I've I've heard a lot about. Yeah. Uh, I understand there was a song connected to that. Do you know the song? Uh, the song I think you're referring to is "Will You Come a Sunday Morning." Yeah, I think it is. I, I, you know what? You don't want us to sing well, I, I, I have the words here. I have the words you want here. To no, there we are. Will you come a Sunday it. morning? Look, if I, I could sing it with you if you know the tune. No, no, no. Well, I can't, no one's going to sing. You don't know the you don't know the song. Do you know what? I've never never met such reluctant singers. <laughs> so you're the guys who know a lot about this area. So tell me about the sort of features that I should be looking for on the rest of my walk then. Well, where was we where we stood at the most recent event on this day it was the fire, uh, which came right to the point where we almost to the point where we're standing. In fact, the track that we stood on was a fire break that was dug by the fire services to, to prevent the fire encroaching any further down the side of the hill here. Um, Pete and I were on fire watch during that, which was uh, an experience in itself. So over, over there we have uh, what was the location of what is known as Newspaper Hall. Newspaper Hall? Yes. Okay, was, that was that was a big manor, was it? It was quite, I don't think it was, I don't think it was. It was, it was originally called Oozle Hall, and it got the nickname Newspaper Hall. Right. Because... Uh, the workers up here, because there's a lot of workers, all the miners and the brick and tile works, and most of them was illiterate. They couldn't read or write. So what they used to do at the end of the week, they'd go down to Oozle Hall, and the guy there would come out onto his steps with his newspaper, and he'd read them in the newspaper. So it got the nickname, Newspaper Hall. 
Fantastic. When, when, when was that? He, he would uh, read them reports um, of the, from the Crimean War. Yeah. So it was 1850s, mid-1850s. Amazing. So we've got Newspaper Hall, we've got the Leaky Dam. What are the other places I should be looking out for? Well, you got, I can tell you. Can you. See, yeah. go on. Oh. This water here, yeah. this is the headwater right. for Deanbrook. And at the top there is the, there's a spout. And that is, that is the actual head of Deanbrook, but it's got a name. And we've called it Spouty McSpout Face. <laughs> and that's what it's called. Everybody knows it as Spouty okay, McSpout, McSpout Face. All right. <laughs> this, 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 was, this was before Bought Him at Bolt oh, Face. Yeah. You, you got there first, did it you? Has to be said, yes. Okay. I'm not, not sure I entirely believe you, but, but, but fair enough. Okay, so we got that. What, what else should I be looking out for? Well, there are all sorts of myths and legends up here as well. Just just on the horizon behind you, Adam, yeah. you can see a cairn that's that's known locally as Two Lads Hill. The actual hill is Crooked Edge Hill, and it's uh, the ancient location of the local folk story about two Saxon sons that perished up on there during a storm. And one of the stories associated with that: once a year, uh, the spectre of a, a horseman appears from there and rides across the moor to Rivington Pike. And if you happen to be walking up along that area at the time and he sees you, then you are the next horseman. Okay. So could you, could you tell a good story, I tell you that. <laughs> tell a good, do, you bring, do you bring people up here and tell them that story at midnight? Um, not really, no. <laughs> well, it's scary enough during the day. Now, also, I have heard that you... Did you find a, some sort of sword? Yes. What's, what's that? Yes, I did. Um, we was working down at Borough Bridge, which is down at the bottom end of the uh, the estate. And we was knocking uh, knotweed by just trampling it down. And I saw this thing on the ground, and I thought it was a statue. And I bent down to pick it up. And I picked it up, and I picked it up, and I picked it up. And there's an enormous... Sword. Are you saying you, you withdrew a sword? I, would, it's like, I withdrew it's a sword. Clubber. I mean, extraordinary. From the storm. It's like Excalibur. <laughs> it's not from the blooming <laughs> stone. You, you came out of the of the, the earth. It, it was just buried in the it, earth. It was. It is on, on, in in the undergrowth, particular, and it's about nearly six foot long. This sword. It's uh, quite a thing to see. Have you have you given it? I bet you've given it a name. Yes, we've given it a name. Go it's on, called. It, we've called it the sword of. I forgot what we called He's it. forgotten the name. He's <laughs> given his own sword. Egberdeen. The Go sword on. of Egberdeen. What, what, oh, why? Because th this is what this area is called, this is, is it? The, that, that is the old name for this area, right. Egberdeen. You haven't got it on you, clearly. Where, where is no. this sword now? This sword is in our war room, in the warden's room. Look at the <laughs> in the war room, you know, it's not in the war room. You can't overtake it. You, I, you see, the problem is, <laughs> these are great stories. I don't know whether you all think this lad's coming up from London. We're just going to tell him any old nonsense. <laughs> this is all true, is it? This, this is all true. This is absolutely true. Yeah, when, we go back to the, when we go back to the hall, Adam, we'll actually give you a personal demonstration. Okay, right. oh. I, I'm not sure I like the sound <laughs> of that. All right, let's let's carry on. It, it sounds all very Harry Potter to me, the, the leaky... Damn the sword of Azkaban or something similar, or the, the, the horseman. I think you need to get this written down. This is going to be the next best series. What an amazing place! Right, so Vicky, we've forded the stream. I know, right. neither of us fell. So I've not seen any animals actually. I mean, is, is it packed with wildlife and just hiding? The estate's got a varied habitat mix, so where we are at the moment is the moorland and we're heading down into some cluffs of woodland here as well. But we've also got just beyond that some heathland, so you'll see different things as you walk through the estate. You could do an hour's walk and be in three or four different habitats. At the moment it's just the start of ground nesting bird season, so if you're up on the moors you might hear skylarks singing and see them rising above the moor, which is beautiful. A little bit further down you'll see lapwings, you'll definitely see them because they're always there at this time of year, so that's lovely. Um, and then down on the heathland, um, you'll see a, a mix of butterflies as well. You might even spy a common lizard if you're lucky. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we've seen a right mix of things down there. I mean, it's, it's a lovely day today. It's beautiful. But it must be very exposed most of the time. Yeah, the, the first planting day that I did, and I'd only been in the job about two weeks, was when the beast from the east came. <laughs> so we were up planting trees and it was minus 11, and I was up there for five hours. And I did wonder at that point, why? <laughs> why taking this job but it was absolutely phenomenal the amount of people that came and did that anyway but yeah it's very variable sometimes you'll see the weather rolling in you can see it coming towards you and there's nothing you can do 
You said talk about stopping. I think we've Alex we've and Pete. We've got Ruth. Ruth is still with us taking photographs. But we've lost Alex, Pete oh, they're and Tracy. Oh, have they? You see, I panic. Without you, I know I'd be going, right, oh, that's it. I'm going to have to live here now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's you. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's the odd man of the hills, they call me. <laughs> You've become one of the legends. Yes, that's right. Yes, the horseman. <laughs> the bold horseman, they would call me. Uh, Over, which would have been oh, really funny. Oh, did I miss? Camera. I missed JC almost falling over. That's normally my job. Yeah. I was nattering away because we've come to this very boggy bit. <laughs> so, Vicky, you're you're in charge of community engagement. What does that actually mean? How important is this area for the people you talk to? I think it's really important. Um, we all know that getting out and about is good for you in different ways. So it can be keeping people healthy, keeping people active, um, keeping people's mental well-being as good as it can be. And we do that in a number of different ways. So we run specific walks with different themes. For example, yesterday we met with our dementia-friendly walking group and they went on a walk from the hall um, in the woodland. And the feedback we get from that is that it's something that people can feel that they're no longer confident doing but with us there to help them and show them the route they feel safe so it's somewhere to come and do something that they used to do all the time that they no longer feel confident doing and it's just a little bit of normality for people right. and it's f absolutely the most joyous part of my month working here when we do those walks it's always makes me feel happy afterwards just the, the way that people seem to are smiling at the end of it everyone's laughing and just the response from the carers as well, that it's just something that they can do with their partner that they hadn't been able to do. Can you imagine going back to your old life, the sort of not stumbling through the mud sort of job? Absolutely not. Honestly, it's changed my life being here. It's the chance to get out and do something that only matters for the sake of looking after the environment, which it absolutely does, and that makes me everything I do as a purpose. Mm. It's seeing the effect that it has on people and getting out into the woods and... The astonishment, especially young kids who might not have a playground or a field outside and they come on a woodland walk with us and sometimes they'll ask, are we allowed in there? And that makes me take a breath really, that they don't know that they are allowed to come to this place and it's theirs and they can come and just run about in it and be a bit wild and, you know, seeing that and seeing how happy it makes people. Even though we're trying to do this talk while stumbling through some yes, right. huge rushy bog and neither of us falling over. No, I know. We've done very <laughs> We've well. We've done really so well. Fact, the only one to fall over was Tracy and she did it whilst I wasn't recording her. So she, she can't was blame me. About, though. She, what? <laughs> she was messing she was about, messing about, weren't she? She wasn't looking where she was going. I mean, everywhere you turn, you feel, God, that's a photo. I know. That's a photo. No, that's a painting. Another thing, Adam. What we did last year was we invested in. Uh, a photography course for our volunteers so they came every one evening every month and focus on a different aspect of taking great landscape photographs and now they're out all the time sending us photographs and we've got this year-round snapshot of the estate constantly coming in and they are so talented Brilliant. we're hoping to do an exhibition in the summer wow. well i'm just going to march up ahead to catch up with alex and pete because i've got a question which i forgot to ask them now, you've told me all sorts of crazy stories about real, this, real. this wood. But he, one thing I have I read about before I came here yes. was a, is it something called the chicken of the, chicken of the woods? That's is that right? One, that's a fungi that grows um, on the tree trunks. Um, the best of it is edible. And it's supposed to be very like... Uh, like, let me guess, chicken. Yeah, yeah, and the, but there's another one that was a beef steak mushroom as well, which is right. big, thick, juicy beef right. steak. But the uh, but most of it isn't. It's just um, it's just uh, poisonous. I think it's the word you're looking no, for. I think, I think they're all. I don't think they're poisonous as such. I'm always far too scared to eat uh, uh, no, like no. a mushroom. You go, it could be nice or it could kill you. I go well. To be honest, I'd rather not try either. Absolutely, <laughs> of course. No, the best advice you'd give it, unless you're an absolute 100% nailed on expert, yeah. stay away. Right. So the chicken of the wood does exist, and it is it a, a sort of fungi. Um, uh, it's, uh, but it's best, unless you know what you're doing, anything like that is best avoided. Good advice. Good advice. So we're coming to, well, we're coming out of the sort of valley. We're on back on a bit of high land. So just. 
tell me what we're seeing here. Look at the huge windswept landscape we, we've got right around us. Absolutely. Well, we have it. We, uh, we're at the head of the valley, Deanbrook Valley here. Runs right down to the centre, through the uh, centre of the valley, into Bolton, uh, into the Crow, then the Irwell, then the Mersey. Um, at the head of the valley here is a bowl created by Winter Hill, Crooked Edge Hill. And over to our right from where we're standing is Adam Hill, right. believe it or not. <laughs> okay, that's right. Named uh, after me, no doubt. So it creates a sort of a bowl and yeah. you, can, you can see the shape of the valley right in front of us. Yeah. You can see clearly on a reasonably clear day as far as Kinder Scout and the Peak Districts. Right. And the Pennines, of course. Have you walked most of this land? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we're heading back up to where we started now, is we're that right? back up to the Mass Road. Right. Uh, and when I was a kid as well, the cotton mills were still in the prime. If you still up here, there would be a, a smog over Bolton. Dozens and dozens of chimneys. Cotton mills. And this was sort of the, the recreation where people couldn't get some clean air. Right. So the cotton mill industry was still strong when you were, yes. when you were a lad. Yeah. And it sort my of mother, disappeared when? My, well, my mother worked. It was in the 60s. The final demise, I think, was in the 70s. Right. Most of it went to India, I think, and, right. and uh, places like that. Um, but my mother worked in the cotton mills. Right. What, what was her job? She was a spinner. Right, gosh. I think it was a spinner. Yeah. So it was a spinning mill. She had a, she had a, yeah. a loom there, and uh, and this is what people would this would get them out of the smog. Would, I mean, when we were kids, we we found the smog quite exciting. We didn't see the health side of it then. You know, you couldn't you couldn't see your hand in front of really? your face. Really, was that bad? Was that bad? Um, it was and up here, it was above all of that, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was. One, one uh, famous Bolton writer from the Victorian times, Alan Clark or Teddy Ashton. He he tells a story of coming up here one time and uh, you could just see the tops of the chimneys, hundreds of chimneys above above the, above the smog. Right. The satanic mills. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a kestrel there. Up here, they're quite common. We, get, we have quite a few. And birds of prey, we have quite a few birds of prey. We've got kestrels. We've got... It, it was hovering there, wasn't it? It spotted hovering. something. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they look they're looking for um, they, they're, they're looking for voles. Oh yeah. They're looking for voles, and apparently they, they, they see an infrared. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is what I've read. They see an ultraviolet. They yeah. see the light in ultraviolet, and they can see where the vole's gone because of its wee trail, right, wow. and they can see that that's how they work. Gosh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely it's spotted something because it's really yeah. it's rock solid over one specific spot. Yeah. Okay. Amazing, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So we're back. We're back onto. I forgot. Is it, it's not Antenna Road. It's <laughs> Mast Road. It? Mast Road. You see, I had the right thought. I just forgotten the name. I mean, it's it's a majestic place. It's a, it's a big landscape. It's ambitious, it's all of those things. The weather's been glorious to us today. Yeah. But it also strikes me as what you're doing here is very different because this isn't just about sort of maintaining the landscape. You're intending to have a big impact, a big change here. Is that fair? I think that is fair, yes. And I think the really important thing about this site is that it'll be working in partnership with lots of different organisations and people. And it's innovation for the Woodland Trust, and that's what this site is all about, demonstrating, learning, and figuring out best ways forward for the future. It, it's quite something, isn't it, to say, someone will be able to look back and go, this woman, Tracy, right, look, she did this to this landscape. She led this team that didn't just plant a few trees, but that changed, that changed something big. This is big. Yeah, and I think probably what they will do is look back and say, the Woodland Trust and the team did it. Yeah. I think that's the really big thing here because it's about all of us working together as a trust, as a team here at Smith Hills Estate, but then also so many partners we need to work yeah. with. So it really is going to be a big job. Uh, um, of all of those things, what is what most excites you about this? Looking 
back on it, you know, 10, 20 years time when these things have started to take root and we really see the effect of all of this. When you're sitting in the pub or in a cup of tea, what do you think you'll be most proud of? I'll be most proud of what a difference we made in terms of bringing the people of Bolton, this estate, back to them and making sure that this estate is really loved and valued as much as it is today, but even more in the future. It is interesting, back in the 1800s, there was a mass trespass where the people of Bolton marched on this land and said, we demand to have access. And rather belatedly, you've given them that access. You go, you don't have to trespass anymore, it's yours. That's exactly how we feel. We really feel that this is our landscape and our means us as the trust and the local people too. It's been a real treat. Thank you very much. A real honour to be toured around by, by, the, by you know, local experts as well. And, and, and the volunteers, they're quite something. So thank you very much indeed. And the, the weather has shone on us. It is, it's been great. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Woodland Trust Woodland Walks with Adam Shaw. Join us next month when Adam will be taking another walk in the company of Woodland Trust staff partners and volunteers don't forget to subscribe to the series on itunes or wherever you're listening to us and do give us a review and a rating and why not send us a recording of your favorite woodland walk to be included in a future podcast keep it to a maximum of five minutes and please tell us what makes your woodland walk special or send us an email with details of your favorite walk and what makes it special to you Send any audio files to podcast at woodlandtrust.org.uk. We look forward to hearing from you.